So will it be a bailout or bankruptcy for the auto industry in this country? Executives from the big three automakers are in D.C. to testify in front of the Senate Banking Committee tomorrow. What are their hopes for this legislation this week or ever? Our next guest voted against the original bailout. He is the Republican senator from South Carolina, Jim DeMint. Whether you voted against it that time or not, Senator, uh, the AIG thing, I mean, AIG got a bailout. Why not GM? <laughs> That's what happens when we start bailing out different uh, businesses across the country. They, they all get in line. Uh, this doesn't really make sense. It, it'll ultimately uh, result in more job loss uh, by the big three if we don't allow them to restructure in a way that they can uh, make a profit long term. Only a few years ago when our economy was uh, running at its best and credit was easy and cheap, the big three were still losing money because of their just built-in labor and uh, financial costs. We need to allow them to fix this. So that's the whole reason that uh, bankruptcy uh, protection was created, so companies could continue to operate. Uh, a, a bailout of any size is not going to help them unless we allow them to restructure. There's a figure rolling around out there that says that we are at 6.5% unemployment right now, that if you allow the big three automakers to go under, unemployment automatically rises to 10%. Do you agree? Agree with that? Do you buy those numbers? No, no I don't. Um, if, a, if the big three go into bankruptcy or one of them does, that doesn't mean they go out of business and, and all of their people are fired. They're, they're, a lot of their people are losing jobs now, and they're going to continue to lose jobs as the big three continue to lose market share because they're not competitive. So we need to make some hard decisions now so that the big three won't just fade away. But 25 billion or 50 billion or 100 billion is not going to save them long term if they don't have a business structure where they can be successful. We used to have American Motors. We used to have Ansel for crying out loud. Uh, we don't have those anymore, and America's still going. That's right, and we've got some pretty successful car companies uh, in the southeast where we have uh, non-union states. Uh, the employees are paid well. The benefits are good. They're not gold-plated, but the gold-plated benefits will eventually bring them down, and that's what's happening to the big three. You think that's what's killing Detroit is union contracts? Primarily, it's, it's, it's the inflexibility uh, that are, that's caused by unionization. They can't change their lines. They can't make quick decisions uh, because there's a third-party arbitration that takes place. Uh, there's no way the big three can be competitive with the barnacles of unionization but, long term. But listen, if these union workers got signed to these fat contracts, you know, management signed off on it, it's not their fault. <laughs> Maybe not, but management has been backed into a wall because government basically uh, backs the unions uh, with the special rights of uh, forcing people to join, uh, special rights of uh, allowing them to use union dues for political purposes. So what we have right now is the Democrats paying back the unions with this uh, auto bailout and, and the unions paying them back every election by getting out the vote. The old saying goes, what's good for GM is good for America. GM wants this bailout. Well, I want GM to succeed, and, and I've been driving Fords for years, and, but the best way for them to succeed is not to prop them up with taxpayer money, but to make them make those hard decisions that'll make them successful long term. Senator Jim DeMint, Republican of South Carolina. Thanks. Thank you. All right, so let's get some expert reaction to all of this news. Fox Business anchor Cheryl Cassoni is here to break it down for us. What do you think of what the senator had to say there? He makes some very valid points, but I think the most important point, we talk about the potential of $25 billion going to the automakers on top of the $25 billion through the Department of Energy, which they already have. They're already getting that to, to boost fuel efficiency and develop new engines, To do that kind the of thing. things that they should have been doing years ago, and that's to make fuel-efficient cars. I mean, they have made serious mistakes mistakes in management. The union contracts are not helping in those legacy contracts. Six-figure salaries for union workers when most Americans do not make six figures. I mean, that, that's the problem. But when it comes back to this $25 billion of taxpayer money that potentially could go, and look, when we get a new president in January, he carried union states, John. That there's payback that's going to have to happen. Well, and he, we can't he, he let also, that go. He also is pushing that uh, uh, Free Choice Act, the so-called you know, uh, Union Vote Act that, that takes right. away the, the, the uh, secret ballot. The right. unions are all for that. Right. I mean, the, 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 my question is, with all of this that we keep talking about, is when is it going to be enough? It's not going to be enough. I've looked at the books of these companies at GM, at Ford. They need tens and tens of billions of dollars. 
25 billion. They're going to burn through that in two to three months. They're going to go. To, they're going to go back and say, taxpayer, give me another 50 billion, another 50 billion. Their problems are not going to be solved with money. And, and you can make the argument. Many do. Well, you gave financial companies help. The automakers deserve the same help. It's, it's one in ten jobs attached to the auto industry. That figure is true. But you made the point to Senator DeMint that, or to, to Jim DeMint that. that Going into bankruptcy does not mean going out of business. It's bankruptcy protection.